number of years I've been writing books, our great mystics of the West, such as Hildegard of Bingen, in whose uh, land I stand right now, uh, Meister Eckhart, and Thomas Aquinas, teaching courses on Mechthild and Julian of Norwich and Nicholas Sakusa and all these great mystics, but the pre-modern consciousness who have a sense of cosmology as well as psychology. So um, I think there are many, many sources for spiritual direction. Uh, obviously, the psychological sciences offer a lot, especially around the issues of shadow. But also, our mystics offer a lot. They too have been writing about the shadow for centuries, calling it the, the via negativa and the dark night of the soul. Um, I also find that musicians can be spiritual directors, and over 30 years of creating programs, a master's program and a doctor ministry program, a, a pedagogy to teach spirituality, I found that um, art as meditation can bring people to their center, can do healing, can get people, get people in touch with their creativity and therefore with their, the divinity inside. We get direction from animals as well. Uh, I was not being facetious when I wrote in my book on compassion years ago that my dog was my spiritual director because he kept me grounded and um, he didn't care about people's applause or things like that. So I think we want to look broadly to and ask the question, you know, who is, uh, who are our spiritual directors? And certainly these deceased uh, members of the communion of saints, the Hildegards and the Eckharts and others, are there to assist us. Uh, angels are here to assist us. Uh, Thomas Aquinas says, angels carry ideas from prophet to prophet. And the image I have is, is uh, bumblebees carrying pollen from flower to flower. And uh, so, and then of course, the, the the warriors of our time, whether it's like Dr. King or, or Gandhi or Dorothy Day, these people also are calling us to our prophetic vocations, to our warriorhood, very needed in today's struggles. So um, then there is a statement by Otto Rank, who I consider one of the really great spiritual directors of the 20th century as a psychologist really the father of humanistic psychology, and he said that um, when, when religion lost the cosmos in the West, society became neurotic. So we had, had to invent psychology to deal with the neurosis. So as religion and cosmology reintegrate, which is what's happening today with the new creation story, and the, the many levels of awe and wonder and sacredness that are returning through science about this world in which we live. As this happens, I do think psychologists are going to have less and less work, but spiritual directors are going to have more work because, once again, it's about uh, recovering a sense of the sacred but putting it into practice, and which means into our professions, into our institutions, into our economics and politics and, and religion and worship and um, the way we live on the earth because, obviously, uh, our earth that is being despoiled by human indifference, callousness, or greed is not an earth where uh, spirituality is, um, is um, in, in, in motion. So uh, I think spiritual directors are very important at this time, but I think we have to be very uh, flexible about how, uh, what forms the spiritual direction takes. And uh, it, it can take the form of the poets that you choose to read, or the musicians you choose to listen to, or one-on-one -on -one dialogues with uh, spiritual friends and, uh, and therapists and others. So, uh, yeah, it's a big world out there. Mm -hmm. <laughs>